All right guys, welcome back for another one. So I wanted to vacuum test this crankcase I put together on the SL750 motor. So I got the bright idea to go to the dollar store and get a nylon cutting board and cut it up so it would fit perfectly to cover all these up with a gasket behind it, the old gaskets. Same thing on the exhaust. I put one between with the gasket. Unfortunately, uh, it's not working. So, I'm gonna let you know in this video how I'm gonna do it. Uh, obviously, it might be, maybe it was a stupid way to go about it. So I really don't know what's going on at this point. Um, I tried blowing smoke from a vape. <laughs> I know it sounds stupid. Into the vacuum pickup on here. And I didn't see smoke coming out of anywhere. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the manifold on. Or the um, carb, the intake on. And the reeds. And we'll see, maybe I'm just not doing it right. I don't know, like I said, I usually don't do this. Uh, so I'll give you the torque spec and I'll show you how we're gonna put that on. All right guys, you're gonna have to use 780 studs. These are the part numbers to run the reed spacers that I'm about to put in here. All right, now that we got our studs in, we can drop our reeds in. Uh, give me one second and I'll show you how we do it. Okay, so we're gonna have gasket, Uh, these reed spacers are off of 780. You have your reed spacer, gasket, and your reed. Like I said, I got carbon fiber reed reeds in here. And then you got your reed stuffer. These reeds don't have a direction. Well, they do. Well, they can only go in one way because you're spacing. Put your reed in. Your gasket and it's gonna repeat the same for all of these and I'll show you how we put the intake on the reeds are all in I just want to give you guys a heads up if you buy a gasket kit for a 750 and you put reed spacers on it you're gonna be three gaskets short so I got a hold of nasty nicks sign them right over nice little cardboard package boom boom all set real nice let's get the intake on all right, now, since I'm running 780 carbs on a 750, this is important. Here's your oil inlets. These are stock for your 750 right here. So instead of buying a 780 manifold, I'm gonna cap these off. And on the 780 carbs, where the needle is, there's the oil inlet. So I'm gonna go ahead and use those. Don't worry, I'll show you when we get it all set up. So let's slide her on. Start blue Loctite everything, and I'll uh, give you the torque specs in just a second. Like I said, blue Loctite, you know the drill. Okay, guys, it's going to be 76 inch pounds for these, and I know you're going to say, well, Mr. SRX, those are really nice chrome cap nuts. How'd you get all those? Those are expensive. Went on eBay, I found a whole box of all the nuts and bolts for a 780. Guy was asking 36 bucks. Cut the price down to 16 bucks. Boom, I got a whole extra part or a whole bin of just nuts and bolts. And look at all these chrome nuts. These are the 780s, like I said. Well, she's going to be styling and profiling. Uh, 76 inch pounds on these. Let's get it done. And I'll tell you what the other ones are in a minute. Okay, here you go. Another example off the uh, 780. But you're going to need them for the reed spacers anyway. Look at the difference. So there you go. So another reason I bought that box of bolts, I didn't even think about that till now. And they're nice and shiny. Look at these. They look good. It's going to be the same thing. I think I told you guys 76 inch pounds or 72. 76 or 72 on the other ones. Blue Loctite. Boom, boom. And then with the reeds in, maybe I can get a vacuum test. I'm really not sure what's going on. i got to figure it out. So Remember, after you torque these down, to retorque your nuts. Obviously everything's getting smushed, the gaskets are getting smushed. So your nuts are going to be loose now, see? I think the manual says 72, I went 76 inch pounds. I just try to do everything with the torque specs guys that has a gasket and stuff. Gotta make sure the stuff is sealing and not intake leaking. So with that being said, I'm racking my brain on why this thing won't vacuum. But I could blow smoke in the vacuum tube 
and it was just fine. So let's see. Can't remember with a reed motor if you gotta have the damn reeds in or not. So I guess I look like an idiot, but hey, I don't know everything. So all right, let's see what happens. All right, guys, so that escalated kind of quickly. I'm using my leak down to test tester because I couldn't get my vacuum tester to work on this. And I'll tell you what, right now, I'm so glad I did this. There's something leaking. I mean, ideally, this is not the best way to do this. But I got real low real low pressure. I'm flowing like two, three pounds. I just got on and off valve, quarter inch barb. I can hear the air. I just can't pinpoint where it's coming from. So bear with me, guys, and uh, we'll figure it out together. It's a new day, guys, and I'm still trying to figure out what's going on, why we can't pressurize this crankcase. So I decided to pressurize the cooling side of this motor and uh, the center cylinder. I have, every, I have block off plates I made here and the center cylinder is getting air into the uh, uh, into the firing uh, down into the cylinder I should say. So I'm thinking that this center cylinder, either the base gasket is screwed up or the cylinder's got a crack in it, which is weird because I bought the cylinder off eBay. So I'm uh, probably gonna take it apart and see what we get, but I can definitely hear, no matter what I do, I can hear the air and I can feel it with my thumb. So no good, we'll see what we get into. All right guys, what I wanna show you here is I have my smoke machine hooked up. It's kind of half ass. The cables aren't long enough to get to my truck, but I can't get this block to hold pressure. I've pressurized it, sprayed it down. Everything's bubbling, or nothing's bubbling, I'm sorry. Yeah, I had a little bubbles around here. These are dollar store um, cutting boards that I got the um, gasket sandwiched in between. And I did find that the one jug in the bottom was warped. Well, my suspicions about this middle cylinder and the base gasket proved true. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's smoke coming out here and out here in the coolant passageways. So I'm gonna pull these jugs back off. All right, I got the top end torn back off trying to chase this leak. I did find a little burr right here. So I cleaned it up. It's a little ridge. And the little ridge was over here too. And these are the different gaskets I'm using. So I uh, checked the bottom of my cylinders. Everything's really clean, you can see. So let's cross our fingers. Uh, I'm gonna change this to the way I'm doing this. I'll show you guys. But uh, yeah, let's hope we can pass the leak down test. I've been having nothing but problems with it, getting it to seal so I could vacuum test it or or you could use pressure either or. Um, so what I did is I got, I believe these are inch and a quarter plugs, don't quote me. And I, this is a one and a half to two inch plug here. I did make block off plates, they didn't work, use the rubber plugs. So I'm a little bit ahead of you guys right now. Um, I had to use my leak down tester to put air in it and what I did is I got a soapy water bottle and I sprayed and if you if you can see right here we're bubbling so I got a leak right here in this um, the intake horn I guess you'd call it or the, the three the triplets where the carbs go on I don't know why it's leaking I've been having hell with it so I'm gonna have to take it back apart um, so once I get it back off and get it back on, I want to show you guys the proper way uh, we're going to use vacuum, hopefully. Uh, the gauge I have is not the best, it's Mighty Vac, so I'm not sure if the gauge leaks or this is leaking, but we're going to go and do it that way. I want to show you guys what I did. It's a real stupid mistake, but it happens. I ordered extra gaskets to put on here because the reed spacers, I needed more than what came in my kit. <laughs> well, let me show you something. It's real stupid. If I can get this off without ripping it. Thickness on these gaskets is different from, I don't know if you can see it, but the ones I got from Windorosa and the ones I got online are different thicknesses. I gotta put the same thickness with the same all the way across, not mix and match. My own fault, live and learn, stupid, stupid. Now that I got the gaskets correct, I got the thicker ones on the outside. I will say when to row saw, I'm not impressed. The base gaskets were shit too, they were junk. Had to get different brand. Pump your gauge up, your vacuum gauge is a nine. And you're gonna let it sit for 10 minutes. If this holds for 10 minutes, without dropping, we're good to go. And there it is guys, the motor held for 10 minutes. 
at nine pounds or nine inch vacuum so that's going to wrap up this video i just want to say thanks for watching if you can smash that subscribe button i really appreciate it i appreciate all the people who have been subscribing to me i'm getting a lot of new subscribers i love it it's, it's great you guys are awesome thank you